What is happening? Welcome to the Mud Blood Podcast with myself, Paddy McDonald. And myself, William Thompson. It's episode 100. And for episode 100, we have got a banger of a guest for you today. 100%. Susie McCabe, an absolute <laughs> banger. <laughs> Many people will testify I am a banger. What does a banger mean? It means in... you're a fucking idiot. Does it? Does it? Yeah, yeah, fucking well banger. done. What's that, that mean? No, I mean something I Scottish. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, I, I, I love I, the way it, it literally just... Literally a little bit of water between us and he's fucking insulting me. Oh, really? <laughs> Only the door. I don't know what I meant that. Yeah. Hear it just means something class. Uh, like, yeah. that's, you hear a good song, like, that's a fucking banger. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Aye, but that's different. Yeah, that's different in <laughs> that context. Like... But when you're saying Susie's a banger, that's... <laughs> She's a banger. <laughs> She's a person in the kitchen at the party. You're like, oh, there's you that a farmer. banger. <laughs> <laughs> it's that a banger. Something I didn't just know throw on the ground and let it explode. <laughs> I've just insulted you straight away. Apologies. Yeah, just, that, just get it in. Uh, oh, what's a crack one? Well, for people that don't know, I can probably announce it now. Susie's doing my support in the SSC. Yes. Can't wait. Yeah, so Buzzing. I can't wait to. Like, I was just, one of them ones, Andrew was going to me, who are you going to get, who are you going to get? And I was going, I don't know, because there's so many views to go through, but then loads of had done it, so I was looking to see yeah. who hadn't done it, and then I was going, there's nobody that really hasn't done it that I would give it to. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, the ones that have done it are the level of the ones that you That I would have wanted there to be, and, yeah. and I, I was just sitting there and I'm just going, what are you worried about it for? And I was like... Because I need to get somebody that will want to do it, one, yeah. who deserves to do it, two. Yeah. And then, uh, and she went, well, did you not say that Susie was meant to do the SSE and then something happened? And I was like, oh, all right, this is where I'm to get Susie. Hey, I, I, I supported Kevin, so I'd done the SSE in Glasgow, yeah. the Hydro in Glasgow with Kevin for 16 nights in Carl, Spain. Yeah. And then we went to Aberdeen for four nights. So I'm buzzing, I'm buzzing to play Belfast. So Andrew just wants a no-brainer, just if Susie hadn't done it and you yeah. like Susie as an act and you just get on well. Oh, yeah. No-brainer. So And it worked out, so I was like delighted, yeah. do you know what I mean? When is that, two weeks' time? Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. What's the date? 12th of May. Ugh, I, I didn't realise it was that soon. Yeah. That's so mental. That's the first one. How are you feeling? I'm dead on about it, like, yeah. Are you? It's, the mad thing. You're too chill about it. I don't like it. But the mad thing about it is, the only thing I'm worried about is not licking the says room. Do you know what? I can understand why you're thinking that, right? But this is your first one, isn't it? First arena, yeah. First so. arena, right? So it's your first arena, so you're not going to not like it. Yeah. Right? No, that's great that I'm doing it. But I think you like you'll get the perspective that day when you go yeah. in, and you'll get the perspective of the size of room. And what it is because I actually, this is a right. So I used to work as an electrical estimator. So I, as an electrical estimator, priced the SSE in Glasgow, the SSE Hydro in Glasgow, Christ. right? And then, and I got my mate comps, and she was, in, and she, she messaged me, and she went, "Do you remember we spent about four months pricing this?" <laughs> and I sent back going, "I, do you remember we had the best price?" But you know, the builder that won it kept it in house, raging, right? <laughs> Fuming. Uh, and it is that thing, like, it's the scale of it, but you just, it's like any other gig. You, you and specifically you, just need to remember that it, your name is on the door and you're yeah. sold that. No, no. And yeah. they're out for a good night and they want you to do well and you're going to do well and you're going to have the time of your life and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Now, looking back in your career in 20 years' time, you might go, I loved my Ulster Halls, I loved my London Palladium, yeah. I loved my Glasgow Kings, yeah. I loved my His Majesties. And but your first arena, well, well oh, it's, it's like me doing the Kings, it's like my first Kings theatre, yeah. it's that thing you, you can't you can't beat it. Yeah. So but just know that it's it's a weird and this is only from a very small support slot, yeah. that it's so vast that that laughter dissipates yes. yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So, you know the way you're in a club and you get a big laugh and you're almost like washed with it and you just yeah. feel it? You don't really get that? It's and just... also, the th- it's like, you know, like in a theatre, it's half a beat? Yes. Right, so, so how big's the Ulster Hall? Ulster Hall's a thousand. The waterfront, which I done last year, was 2,000. Right, so like. you're 2,000. So, you know, it's that half a beat yeah. where it just rolls out and then comes back in a big wave. Yeah. And it's just that half a beat yeah. more than than a comedy club. Right. So the arena is a full beat from a comedy right, club okay. because yeah. it's that whoosh, 
because it's quick all the way up and then, it, and then it comes back but it doesn't come back like a theatre which know, is like a mean, wave yeah, yeah, it comes yeah. back and it, it goes and that's it, it yeah. and then you just bang on the next one and it's kind of relentless right do you so know what I mean like shooting uh, I, yeah. I like like you are you are constant and also at what I, would, I also supported Jason Manfield at the mm -hmm. SSE as well my thing was and obviously as a support act that you totally get this whether you're in a theatre or, or not but the movement because because a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months before I'd done Kevin's support we went to see me and Nicola went to see we get tickets from a friend to go and see David Gray the Singer. White Ladder mm -hmm. tour and we were sat in a really lovely seat and it was like straight posh seat it was great straight in front of the stage just a bit back floor slightly elevated and I was so conscious of the movement and I thought I need to bear that in mind mm -hmm. there's probably so I think in Glasgow it's twelve and a half thousand, and I was probably thinking at points in this there's at least a thousand people moving about. Yeah, because it's toilets Drink. and bevy yeah. and you know using disabled toilets, no right, <laughs> right, yeah. and there's just a a movement and you you can see the silhouette of it in the yeah. shadows, but you just have to remember. Ah, uh, yes, that. that's not the thing. You just have to keep going. Yeah. Right? Well, things I, like that don't really affect me. You know that. I just yeah. only play on. Yeah. But the work in progress that I've had, I've just been every <laughs> single one of them. Every one of them, Susie. Like you attract bangers. And we've spoke about this in the Empire, and you were yeah. telling me things, that, and I was taking all that on board. Well, this girl flew in the first night of the work in progress, right, a couple of weeks ago. 300-seater. And she sat right at the front, and she brought, like, presents and stuff for me, like, a couple of hundred quid of stuff and all, right? Well, I'll, I'll be talking to her about yeah. hitting in my man. Oh, you see. <laughs> but she, she, she was like, I flew in, she was all excited, and I, I was bringing on flew the support. Flew in from where? Glasgow. Of right? course. Yeah. And she, she she was all talking away, and everybody was going, oh, and I was going, ah, oh, this is great to hear, and all. I bring my support act out, he came out, she was all great, no issue. And then I came on stage, and she was sleeping. And I was like, what happened to her? What did you do to her? And they were like, she drank two bottles of gin. The, the people sitting next to Fucking like, gin? She drank two bottles of gin and, and they were like... God bless Glasgow. Yeah. <laughs> what a say. But she was, she was shouting in her sleep. She wasn't hackling the show, but she was shouting in her sleep. And I was trying to play on. You know I will. They're all like, yeah. somebody's sleeping, you sort of, yo. And then you just have to move on with it. But the crowd couldn't hear and the crowd were getting up and she and going, stop. And looking at me and then there was no security at the gig and I was like aye but you're in a different set this time because you're going to have security You'll have so that, that happens yeah. at the front and they're going yeah. to go and go hey yeah. come on yeah. come to the first yes. aid corner That's get a I drink said. of water this happened in Belfast it'd be like come on out straight away aye. And, and do you know what they wouldn't even just put her out they would, they would take her out the arena sit her in a seat yeah, make know. sure she's alright so it's a different thing yeah. so, so that but also the heckling thing you know I mean you're, you're, you're going to get it, it. Yeah. I'm going to get it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but you just you know, you've got to... There's arena security in there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to set your stall out about what you expect and what you want because mm -hmm. essentially that's your arena for that night. And they're provided as part of that. Mm -hmm. And you will say whatever you want to happen. And if it's a case of going one heckle and they're out or if it's like... Because see if they're up there, you can't do anything about no, that. No, you don't even know who it is. You also like can't football. even... You may hear their voice. Yeah. You've no fucking clue what they're saying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got no idea. So if it's immediate and if it's at the front, you can certainly do something. Yeah. But see if it's anywhere else, you've just got to trust the security yeah, that's just, just going to deal with it. with it. And that's the people you see moving about too. But I, that's the only thing. Like, I'm not worried about it. I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait. And I think it's going to be a great night. It's my birthday and I'm going to enjoy it. So, But I, I think it's one of them ones that I'm I'm hoping that I'll love it as much as I think I'm going to love it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you will. Yeah. You will. And you'll figure out, because when I, when I did it with Shane... The first five minutes I was doing it like it was a club set, same rhythm and stuff. And only about five minutes into it, I'm like, I can hear my... Like, you can hear... It takes time for you to, like, realise you can hear your own voice mm -hmm. back at you. And that can throw you off So, I don't know what that building's like, mm -hmm. right? But I know that at the hydro, you didn't... But you'll set your speakers. So, like, if I'm in there at three o'clock in the afternoon doing a sound check for you, they'll... We'll set the speakers for yeah. that level. Yeah. For do no, you do you want to hear yourself or not? 
However, I know that the Aberdeen Arena is not built the same. So the SSE Hydro in Glasgow, yeah. well, no, is round with a... And it's got, like, panelling, it's got acoustic stuff in it, right? Because it's really good for bands. Yeah. The Aberdeen Arena is a conference centre, so that's the P&J Arena, but it's Rave, the yeah, that one, yeah. AECC, right? Yeah. And it's square, but at the very back of the room, before you go into the concourse, is a breeze b- brick wall. Right. So when you... Bang, bang. Like, Come straight back. It's like five asides, man. Just, mm, just getting the ball back. bounced off your face. Yeah. And if you stand at the side of that arena... You can hear it. You can hear everything twice if you stand at any one of the sides. If you're in the middle, it's fine, but it can come back. So I don't know what what your arena's like. It like with the back wall. Yeah, well, ours is a is a big. So you're fine if it's server. oval. It's yeah. it's better if it's oval. Yeah. But it's because the P and G Live as gets used as a conference centre they as opposed to yeah. a concert hall. Yeah. yeah. Aye, so because they have like. Expo Oil Weeks in Aberdeen right. twice a year, so it's it, it was built for that more than it was built for anything else. Aye, yeah, I, I. That's just one thing I know. Five minutes into it, the first time I was like, "That's when I realised how my voice was coming across," because like it was at the end of me hearing it back. Uh-huh. They were then laughing at that, so it was like, "Fuck, it's taking them that long to hear it," because you're used to as soon as I say this into the they've microphone, heard it, yeah. they've heard it. Whereas this, it was like you have to wait almost three seconds for them to I hear what you have said. Full club beat uh, beat yeah do you know what I mean it, yeah. it, it's weird like I learned that on stage at uh, it so it took me almost like 10 minutes into it to even develop the rhythms yeah second time was way better the first time it freaked the fuck out of me it's but you're on stage so you're trying two goals out there <laughs> <laughs> no you'll be fine yeah. that's just one thing I would say look remember yeah. that because I had to learn while I was on yeah and you're almost freaking out being like am I fucking dying but and you, then you realize you'll, you'll discover that as soon as so you, you do, do your sound yes. check, do you yeah. know what I mean? You'll see what it is. Because I think my flight's like an early, like a late morning flight. Right, so okay, I'll so be oh, over you'll be a bit bad. and in the hotel, and then we can just go down together and, and yeah, just get it sorted. I get everything the way you want, you want it. it. Yeah. And whatever else you need, I'll be there because that's what your support act does. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not just yeah. turning up and doing the yeah. doing the bits going to our latte, mate. Yeah. Do you hear it? Here, I'm lovely. I'm lovely on support act. <laughs> You don't have does to carry you, them. Does he give you foot rubs? Does he give you back? No, you have to give me those. My wee legs hurt. His wee legs hurt because he's disabled. So you have, he, I carried him to the airport in Edinburgh for fuck's sake. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. But it's it's good to see because, like, me and Susie gigged together. It was about 12 years ago. How long are you going? Aye, about 12 years. Aye, aye, about that. Aye. So probably I've been going. This will be a. This will when did I start? 2011, yeah, yeah, so yeah. 12 years. Yeah, because yeah. it was 2012 I gigged with you. Aye. And I was only started. And it was like April or May of that, that year. Yeah. And um, friends of mine went to the show as well. But I was telling Susie on the way in here, there's a bunch of fellas who were all Ranger supporters and they were like, here, do you want to go for a, a pint and a burger after the show? And I said, I so I went with them. And they were, they were calling me Susie, you know. And they were going, you and Susie are just like, the Glasgow and Belfast <laughs> version <laughs> and I was still well she was funnier than me well, <laughs> no she was we wanted to go with, we wanted to go with a burger and a pint with her but she, she didn't want never it. once have a group of Rangers fans <laughs> asked me for a burger and a pint but I'll take it man I'll you take know, it see the, see the whole thing that's the mad thing I have loads of Rangers fans in Glasgow you do. Like, when I don't own more they missed the match to come to the show and I was really surprised like what I'm saying my message I mean, there's like, loads of jokes in that there mate there? but I'm biting my tongue man but oh, I'm go off, for it go for I'm it I'm off Twitter now so I can probably <laughs> say it I'd miss the match to come and see you and I don't even like you <laughs> <laughs> this season rotten man. <laughs> nobody needs to be watching that oh no <laughs> rotten <laughs> uh, Susie likes a wee bit of green away too I know contrary to what my Outfit is the day, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, when in Rome or not. Yeah, but no, it, it's great that. And I've loved, I mean, Glasgow's probably my second city, isn't it? Aye. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, the people of Glasgow just. It's, I, the, same, it's really the same, it's the same people, it's the same people yeah. in, in the two cities. And do you know what? We're like, I always say that, like, just come to Belfast, just like being in Glasgow. It's yeah. just the yeah. same city, but we, you know, yeah. like, a good, a good breakfast. That's what I love when, when English acts yeah. gig here, they always figure out, like, oh, it's very rowdy, and I don't, and Scottish people are like, this is the exact same. Yeah. We're totally. used to this. They're kind of expecting, sometimes I've seen uh, some English acts, not all English like, acts at all, but, you know, they're like expecting, ah, 
diddly dee, diddly dee, and you're a bit like, <sighs> listen, it's a bit less river dance and a bit more paisley. That's all I'm saying. It's <laughs> yeah. such an accent. I do a joke about it every time I'm in Belfast, where I go, you know, you. You know, this one. Go. You, you, when you hear someone from Glasgow in Belfast having a conversation, if you're not from any of those two areas, you just think there's a fight. <laughs> I bet you a bag with that. Aye, pal. It just it automatically feels like a very aggressive situation. And it's just not. But it, yeah. if you're not from any of those two places, it's you just like... It, yeah. Something's going to kick off here. And you're like, I'm just asking for Jack a bag. Jack Whitehall said that about me. Yeah. It was Jack Whitehall I gigged with him in London. And he ignored me like... And, and I was just like, well, maybe because, and he wasn't even at the height that he's at, you know. He was, yeah. he was known, but not really known. And he just didn't speak to me. And then he came over with a friend of mine who played football, and they got friendly at the Glastonbury Festival. And then uh, he came over to play five a side, and then he says, "Give me a few references for the show." And I said, "I gig with you before," and he was like, "Where?" And I told him, and he's like, "Was that you? You didn't have a beer and all?" And I was like, "Yeah," and he says. I shit myself when you came into the building. He says, you walked in and worked man's clothes and went, here lads, don't make me, I'm fucking getting chains. He says, I just sat in the corner and went, this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> I scared him. Just sitting going, I'm terribly sorry for how my nation conducted this. <laughs> just shit himself. Just bowing. <laughs> like, <laughs> just bowing and he was like, so that's why I didn't speak. It was just like, I'd never heard anything more threatening in my life being, you all right, mate? <laughs> it's, it, like, it's true though. It's yeah. true. Even like, if I go down south and, I, and I'll flatten it a bit just slow it down I don't change my accent yeah. or anything like that but I'll flatten it and you can you, people are just like oh I'm I don't I'm just going to laugh because I'm scared yeah <laughs> yeah and, and you go oh, that's what it is you know you're you're working class west coast of Scotland. I can't be like, hi, hi. No, it's not going to happen. Imagine me just being like, hi, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> no, it wouldn't you, work. You, would, you just wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And whenever people say, like, you know, who's on the Empire, who's on the Empire, when Susie's on, I always tell people, come down, because you're really going to enjoy it. And so, and, but I've seen people coming over, and there's this one guy come over, and he was like, and I said, tell him about the back, and he just didn't listen to me, and I was like, listen, these people don't see themselves as English. They may see themselves as British. Some won't see themselves as any of them two things. He says, whatever you do, don't associate them with any of that. Yeah. And he was like... Because you'll fuck them off. Yeah, and he was like, I, I come from Lamington Spa. And he was like... <laughs> <laughs> the problem with us, English... Like, that was his first sentence. And I just turned to mind, I make it ready to go back on here. And he was a headliner. And five minutes later, I was on stage with the microphone and he was at the back crying because like people were like fuck up nah nah <laughs> <You're> kid <laughs> I, fuck I think when you're from Glasgow and not even particularly when you're Scottish but I think when you're from Glasgow yeah. and you come here you get a free pass oh, yeah. and I people think love you it. guys get a free pass oh, absolutely. Every, yeah. we all just go he gets it they, they know what they mean they, they 100% can see what they like mm -hmm. because it's fine yeah. And we can, like, I can say what I like because it's fine and they will not take offence. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, no, no. Because they just go, ah, you can see that as a Glasgow <laughs> oh, it's a bit of crack, But yeah. if, like, a Scouser even says it, I don't think they get the same kind yeah. of pass. I, I think there's a kind of... element of English thing about them. You be careful. I, <laughs> yeah. I, this, I don't you be coming over here and poking fun at us, mate. Yeah. Because, do you know what? We're not having it. Yeah. yeah. And and I totally get it, whereas I think when you're from Glasgow, as long as you balance it, which invariably I always will, as long as you balance whatever you're trying to say, people will be like, you're all right. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. all right. And they'll take it. Aye. But always also self-deprecate first. Oh, you know, that's self -deprecate a... Self-deprecate first. You know, take it out yourself first. Then you can have a wee jibe and a wee joke. The, la the last time I'd done the Empire with you was the end of June. Mm-hmm. And I had been doing that stuff about growing up in the East End of Glasgow and having to go to the brownies in the East End of Glasgow, right? <laughs> and how they asked us to make a raft, so a raft was made of wooden pallets, right? And I was walking from the bus station to the hotel and I went past a spare bit of ground and there was four lads in ranger's tops dragging wooden pallets, right? <laughs> it was the last week in June. Busy boys. So I get sent to the club and I'm, I'm doing the bit about the brownies and the raft building and I just went, here, Belfast, 
I was walking from the bus station today and I seen these four lads in Rangers tops lifting up all these wooden pallets and I thought, well played Belfast, you let your boys join the brownies now. <laughs> and the place just <laughs> went for it, do you know what I mean? Because they were like, you can make that joke because you, you know exactly what's going on no, there. Yeah, but You've made a daft observation and put it into your own material yes. and just done a wee... I know, you know, I know, I know, you know, and let's just have a wee laugh yeah. and move on. Yeah. And and that's... Yeah. You, there's something about when you go into a green room, say you're doing a club in England, and you just... There's someone goes, I'm from Glasgow, I'm just like, you're my friend. Yes, like, yeah, you sit beside yeah. them. That's, I remember, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, me and your friends today. That's when I met Liam, that's why me and him got along yeah. so well. Liam. Um, Farley. Uh, We've had him on this lovely, loveliest fella. Such yeah. a good guy. I it, tried to get Liam as... as Tour support when for dates Christopher couldn't do uh, and he couldn't he couldn't do them with his own diary and that's fair dues but what a boy man oh, I, I, love I, I just he just he makes me laugh and he just I've got a, I, I kind of look at sometimes and I don't mean this in a pure I'm like a got I'm like a parent to these guys I'm not but there's and I talk a wee bit about this in my new show about when I worked in sight and had an apprentice yeah and it's not that they need like from an apprentice learning comedy way. It's not like that. But I just love spending time and getting some of their chat because they're just really funny guys. Yeah. And they're, love, they're yeah. just genuinely good young guys. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, the world's all right. The world's going to be all right if yeah. guys like you are. are coming it, through, yeah. Do There's you know That's I mean? like more, like the, I'd say they're my generation of people and the, most of them are fucking lovely. Yeah. I've yet to meet one I don't like. Mm. But the first time I met Liam, the rest of the acts were all English and a wee bit posh and stuff, so me and Liam didn't really fit in with anyone, so we just sat for hours in that you green room. And wh- nobody... Where, where you were gigging? Oh, yeah, it was the Newcastle... Stand? No, Tyne Up... Tyne, Opera Hill. Opera Hill, yeah, Opera it was the New Comedy Awards, the final, and me and Liam were in. Uh, but before... And Liam didn't know that much about Belfast, so before we went on, it was in November, they went, OK, guys, you have the option. If you want to, you can wear a poppy, or, or you, you don't have to if you don't want to. And they went, nah, and I... And I was like, why the... F- I knew why, but he didn't know I knew why. So I went, why the fuck not? And he went, oh, it's just this thing in Glasgow. But I was like, my fucking with you, mate, don't worry about it. And then went away. Here we fucking I did that just to fuck with him. Here we fucking <laughs> But he panicked because I don't he, think he, he wanted was, to film me. He was genuinely annoyed. Like, he was, was like, a fuck. He I, was wanting everybody to work. Dead on, dead on. You, I hate when you paint me out to be like super urban. No, because no, no, you only do that whenever I say something about Ireland and then you go, Storn Arn. That's the only time you kick me off when you're like, you're Irish. I'm like, I'm not. But that's the only time. Northern Irish. Northern Irish. But that's the Are only... Are you quite specific about that? Yeah, it's, I Irish don't like thing. when people call me British either. Yeah, I don't, don't get me wrong, I don't care, really. But it's the banter we have, because he likes to just go, he's a, he'll be like, here's this wee Irish boy comes on, and he brings me on stage at a fucking gar club. Amazing. With, <laughs> with don't. <laughs> Amazing. And he brought me on to simply the best. Amazing. So it, it's that bit of banter. <laughs> me and him had that from, when he first started, everybody used to go, fuck, you two hate each other. And we were like, we really don't. Yeah, we're um, very good friends. Like, it was, like, really close, like, fucking mates. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. just took them. I was like, what the fuck are you looking at? And, and I come in like, this dickhead's fucking on, is it? But I didn't have that with nobody else, but I felt it could because he was working class, so he yeah. got it. Aye. But the rest of them were all like, I don't really don't like each other. And I was like, fucking totally the opposite. Like, <laughs> but it's also it. that thing of going, it's kind of funny. It's yeah, funny yeah, yeah. fuck. It's funny. Yeah. And as long as you're not, if you two know what the boundaries are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine. I used to work with a guy. He was my boss, right? And he was, he was running about my age. And he was a big Rangers man, right? But he never, ever gave anything out. Never gave anything out, like, because he went, oh, I just can't take it when we get beat, so I'm yeah. just not giving it out. So nobody then... Pushed him. Pushed him, right? Because yeah. he went, yeah. you're right, mate. Ah, oh, you would have enjoyed the game yesterday. I mm. or, you know, you're right, yeah. mate. Oh, you would yeah. have enjoyed the game yesterday. I I did, pal. I, uh. Right, OK. And that, that was it. Right, but there was another guy that I used to work with who was a manager on a different team, and he would be like, oh, right, get it up in, here, right yeah. in for the week before it, giving it all that, and then you'd come in the Monday, right, and you'd just be sitting there with your coffee, and he, he wouldn't even he wouldn't even talk to you in the stairs, <laughs> and you're like that. And I remember one night, must have been about 2011, 2000, 2000 and, no, it was about 2010, just as things were starting to really go wrong at Ibrooks before it went yeah. really wrong 
and I was uh, leaving, and I think Celtic were playing whoever, right? So say they were playing Man United, and he walked past and he went, oh, come on, Man U, and I just went, oh, come on, Lloyds, TSB, right? <laughs> three weeks! Never spoke to me for three weeks! I go over and ask him stuff, he's like, if you talk to a member of the team, like, he was in such a hot and I'm like... You threw the insult. I threw an insult back, back and you're like raging. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, what, man? Like, 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 there's got to be a bit of you that's like, so the last uh, Celtic Rangers game, not the one at Celtic Park, it was at, I, no, it was at Hamden. It was a cup final. And uh, we had a Celtic Rangers stay in the house. And uh, there was one guy. And then the rest were all girls, right? So we set up the away end and it was like wooden seats for the Rangers and then the Celtic fans on the sofa, right? Yeah. Like comfy. Soft seats, yeah. Comfy seats, comfy seats for the home team and all that, yeah. right? Just having a laugh. Everybody was just sat there watching the game. What a laugh. We had plain stupid games like put 50 pence in for what time the next goal is. Mate, Michelle, massive blue nose. Season ticket holder yeah. for years and years and years and years and years. Massive. She's like, 55. Well, sure, did Celtic not score in the 55? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I can't believe she this. I can't believe <laughs> this. I oh, no, can't believe this. And she just that like, and we've got pizzas and pakoras and everybody. That's the way it should be. And like. there's no sectarianism yeah. or bigotry. It's just sitting like... Having a oh, we you and the Roger Cook referee that nah, should never be in the book. Oh, that referee's a cheat. Like just that level of daftness had a had a prize going round. It was like a thingy parcel going round and we opened it up and it was Kev, one of the only guy in the house, right? My pal Kirsty's uh, man, and it was a pair of paddy power pants. Well, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's just great. And it's just a really, really good laugh. Then at the end of the game, it was Man U in the Carabao Cup final. Kev comes out the bathroom with the Man U top on, sitting down ready to watch the Man U game. With her other pal sitting. She's a Liverpool fan. She's like, are you joking? <laughs> and you're like, oh, don't you two start. We've got yes. through a full cup <laughs> final. Firm, what a laugh. And you two are suddenly going to bring the hatred. <laughs> you know what I mean? About cotton mills and canals. I mean, you go, man. <laughs> Fucking great. <laughs> Fucking great. But do you know what I mean? No, and no. it's just a really yeah. good day and everybody got home safe and everybody like, all right, well done. At the end of the game, well done. Big hugs because yeah. it was just your pals. And Kev actually commented, I've never watched a game of football with all women who were all football fans, genuine yes. football fans. And he went, it was really nice because it was just great fun because yeah. there yeah. was no kind of toxicity yeah. attached to it. Yeah. Because there was no oh, anger, yeah. and everybody's having a couple of drinks. And if, if the commentator said something, everybody's having a shot. Nicholas made a cocktail; it was the most disgusting shot you've ever you've ever drank in your life. But I got drunk. Aye, oh, blind. <laughs> <laughs> She's for Glasgow, man. But, love... but do you know what I mean? So, and I just like see that. I love that. That's great. That's, That's what it's that about. Banter. I took him to Sally Park. We had our our show in the. Or more. Or more. And I took him to Celtic Park. Now we could only go for like 60 minutes of the match because yeah. we had to go and do the sound check. But we had, what was the crack? Like? Oh, it was great. I mean, you brought me on the bus for the Celtic boys, sat me down in the arena and went, he's a fucking prawn. He's a fucking <laughs> Rangers man. The way he passed it. I actually got a lot of shit for saying Pradison because, I mean, that actually, there's loads of Pradison Celtic fans. Like, <laughs> so Jock really, Yeah. Kenny Douglas. Mike, Mike. Danny McGreen. Loads like, of them, like loads of so kinder. the Pralison thing doesn't really it shouldn't come into it like no. so a lot of people were like you fucking and it was Celtic people going to me you fucking know your cousin's married a fucking guy who's a Pralison supports Celtic and I'm like I know I'm just trying to give because he's really Chelsea so but I was trying to make That's, it um, a Chelsea worse, don't leave him I cannot honestly what not not having it yeah I don't have an English team yeah because I don't have enough love in my heart to pass it out for two I, teams I can't I just can't. I just, I'm just my beloved. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's, well, this we talk about this. Like, I, I'd support Chelsea, but if they lose, my day's not ruined. The only time I get upset is when Northern Ireland get beat. Mm-hmm. That'll ruin my fucking week. Jesus, Anything you must else? Have some bad weeks. Oh, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've had two good weeks in my life. <laughs> 
<laughs> We've been to Spain once 15 years ago and I'm still living off that. <laughs> Set off, get a bit of- Put a poster of Martin O'Neill in your room with the Northern <laughs> Ireland top on, man. That is... Jesus, that's about as far as that'll get for him. Fuck, I was there 20 years ago, we beat Spain. Think about that, 06. Jeez. Fuck, I'm, look I'm at never... the cocky Scotland fan like that, right, eh? <laughs> Must be terrible being you. <laughs> yeah. Scotland's getting their shit together, but oh, aren't great, they? Some great players in yeah. that squad. And, and good football as well, do you know? Like, you can see what Clark's trying to do. And, and do you know what? I'm just like, I always look at like Ireland because I always think that Ireland go through cycles you know yeah. as a small footballing country they go through cycles of having a team that will qualify for two three championships on the bounce or more and then they're kind of a wee bit lost and then another cycle comes through and so on the Republic of Ireland team like the under 17s are like Brazil why the fuck are you into the under 17s team but you need to know what's coming up through but what it is is because there's so many of like African nations and Brazilians and stuff now all living in Ireland and this is so all their kids to Scotland, and man. this is what's going to happen so, so you want, like, they're they're going their to team this. is like unbelievable like everybody's they're, at their age group they're like second in the world it's yeah. and they're all coming I remember through. Scotland getting to a, I think it was an under 17 World Cup final against Saudi Arabia one player for that squad made it to the national team. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to rain. On no, the, I know you are. I know you are, we tell you, but... <laughs> right, I'm not. <laughs> but the, I'm the not. most success we ever had, like, if we admit it, with the Republic team, was Jackie Charlton. Who it's how you're 90. And most of the team, like, we were oh, watching it, and no, because you can't really hear, but every, everybody was being interviewed after the match, and everybody was looking at each other going, your man's a fucking English man. <laughs> Aye. Mick McCarthy. Um, Ray Houghton from Ray Glasgow. Ray Houghton was from Glasgow. There was... Uh, Paul McGrath. Paul McGrath. Well, Paul McGrath is Irish, like, so we'll get, I know he doesn't look Irish, but he fucking is. Well, who else was in that? I'm trying team? to think who was the English Steve ones. Staunton? Steve Staunton. Steve um, Staunton. Um, Tony Cascarino. Oh, don't even <laughs> shut up! <laughs> it's a Celtic fan having PTSD. I don't there. know who he is. Well, he, it's he best came, you don't. He, he <laughs> is like an English Italian who played for Ireland, but he came to Celtic, and what a fucking wanker what he was. A what a did What did he do? He was shite. Just yeah. shit. Yeah. Jason McAteer. Jason McAteer. Oh, was, what a player! He was Liverpool Engl- he in was, Ireland, wasn't he? What a yeah. player he was. He was uh, Liverpoolian, yeah. Phil Bob was Liverpoolian, um, wasn't he? I think yeah. he was. Yeah. Chris Morris. Celtic. Yeah, he was Celtic. He was man. a good uh, uh, Celtic centenary squad uh, with Mike McCarthy. Um, Chris Morris, really, really good player. He was. Ah, he was. Chris Morris played at, with Anthony Rogan. Anthony Rogan was from. Oh, for fuck's sake, Anton. <laughs> First words, Rudy Vata. <laughs> <heard. laughs> First words, Rudy Vata, whose son is now playing for Celtic. Rocco. Rocco. Rudy Vata, when he signed for Celtic. First words he heard in the training pitch. Oh, for fuck's sake, Anton. <laughs> <laughs> Which was, uh, that's, uh, I mean, that it's an urban myth. Anton is now a plumber in Oxfordshire. That's right, that's right. Lex Bailey also played in that team. He's now a copper. Is that right? Aye, aye. Owen Archdeacon, did he not play for the Republic? Because you weren't getting a Scotland team in the 80s with a name of Owen, Owen Archdeacon. Archdeacon. I don't know. He may have. Did yeah. he play for Celtic too, didn't he? Aye, aye, Owen Archdeacon. Aye, well. Well, he was is, in the squad. He played for Celtic, right? Yeah. But, I mean, at that time... It was probably the only team in Glasgow would have signed him. Yeah. You know, the only big team that yeah. would have signed him at that time. Yeah. Because, it, because yeah. I think he was like 86, 87. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so he wasn't a good sign. I have not a fucking clue okay. what, what's been said the past five minutes. Good. That, I good. don't know any good. of these good. This, is, good. this is code chat. <laughs> this is us excluding you. <laughs> See how Kevin, you like yeah. it. This is like, you this like, is like when Sinn Féin talk Irish. And aye, that's aye, exactly what this is like. And the day you appear like, how do I make a country? <laughs> <laughs> like, this bastard said, talk to me. <laughs> Curry my yoghurt. Someone say, someone say Healy. I know him. That's a player. Uh, that's a good Healy. player. David Healy. <laughs> he, was a, he was a good player. Only for do you us. know what? I know two lads that was united with him. And he was, but he wasn't... That nice of person, anyway. Did he also play? We're for gonna have Haley at the door. You don't fucking say anything. He played for the Rangers, didn't he? Played for Rangers and he played for Brett. Because he scored for Rangers on like the first time he scored, he went. Didn't he run over the sidelines and play the flute? Did he? Was that him or was it was Lafferty? Gaza, Gaza done that. Gaza, Gaza did that. Done I thought Gaza, he was I was at the was match at where the he done that. Yeah, I guess. I may be getting the mixed I up. I got then. a ticket given to me, right, which I paid for, 
And when I get in, somebody was sitting in the seat and I was fighting with them and they were like, this is my season ticket. This is my seat. He said, they're all time. So then I had, they said, the ground, I showed them the ticket and all and they were like, that's been a duplicate. They said, you can watch it on the screens. And I was like, I didn't pay all that money to come here. And then Gaza done that. And then I get put out. So that was where I used to, my season ticket used to be, block one one three, and it was right next to when like the Rangers fans had full capacity because there was a section of the Celtic fans and that would could, give up yep. their season ticket like a bit more you'd maybe take your kid and whatever and go right, we'll not go to the Rangers games. So I was one one three, so I was about I think maybe about five or six rows or columns if you like away from the segregation where it would start and it used to be a line of police and then ten empty rows and then a line of police and I never understood how people would just come to the game and shout at each other while the game was going on and you were like like grown men standing in their seats and you're like mate I've actually paid to watch a game of football and they're turned that way I, I just, like, like literally if you wanted to do like that, that just, just go to the pace and, line and, and just shout across it and like. you're sitting just trying to watch a game of football and at that point as well you know Celtic players like De Canio and, Cadet, and, and yeah, it, you know you wanted big to names, you wanted I? to watch them because they, they had a bit about them they had flair and skill and it was intricate and it was, it was great and do you know what see what you like that was a cracking Rangers team, right? Broke mm. your heart, but it was a cracking Rangers team. This is like your loud drops and all that. Do you know when you were yeah. sitting going, and see Gascoigne, you see like about him as well. Gascoigne would go 86 minutes and not touch a ball and get pelters for 86 minutes and then just put a slide drill pass through and you were like that. Yeah, bastard. That's genius. But I, I loved him before he went to Rangers. Like when he signed for Rangers, I was like, oh. I fucking, like, I love But him. I think he was just like, yeah. I'm not excusing that, yeah. right? But I think that, I think Gascoigne being Gascoigne and what we know now about Gascoigne, he was just that bummer merchant. Oh, yeah, he's he that guy in the side that would hide your tools. If he, if he had a joint Celtic, he'd have been over to the Rangers fans. Like, yeah, he aye, just aye, did it the aye, fuck aye, with he, him. He would have, he would have, you know yeah. he would have. He, we, he's we, the guy we, in the side that would have like... <laughs> Emptied the tea cabin <laughs> of the kettle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And all the chairs. Yeah. You know I was I, mean? I was a fucking messer too. I, I I get I was I was like him, and I used to get joke like in my football team was that they used to call me Gaza and stuff like that because they were like you're just like him. You know, I would run in right on on the pitch for training and stuff and nothing on. No, do you know what I mean? Just fucking anything for a laugh. Yeah. The coach used to be like, "Will you fucking stop? We're trying to be serious." You know? <laughs> yeah. So he's probably we, like we that. did uh, when Gaza was here for speaking to her. We did warm up for him. Amazing. Us two did like ten minutes that each. Was so funny. There was these guys and couples from Scotland, right? <laughs> and we get we get put at their table, right? So I'm sitting in amongst the enemy. Let me just say, right? So these guys were sitting here and like. With the couples and the guy was like, "All right, my man, what you doing all that there?" And I, what was it I said? Then I says we were paramilitaries. Was it? You said something. You you didn't say paramilitaries, but you alluded to it. Oh, people yeah. were coming over and saying, "Can we get a photo? Can we get a photo?" So they were like, "What are you doing?" Like, and I sort of went, "We're sort of known here." <laughs> and he went, "You're a, you're a, you're a he, banger." And here he was. Here he was. Like, hey, hey, you know, so he's, he's whispering to his missus and he's going, Yeah, that boy's, yeah, that boy's. Uh, yeah, man, you're believable for that, but you're also going, I'm well known, and I'm just sitting there going, WrestleMania's on tonight. I can't, <laughs> can we leave? And then I, I get up and done the thing and all, but it was fucking great. It was great. It. We met him yeah. very briefly. Yeah, it was like, Do you want to make Gaza? I feel for him, man. Like, I feel for him. Oh, because, he has his demons, like. Oh, and you know, it's the whole George Bass thing, isn't it? It's people still buying him a pint. It's that whole thing. And yeah. You go, Ordinary working class people that never had nothing and then all of a sudden they, they end up with everything and they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with fame and being a genius. And also the association as well of maybe having people in your life and you can't pick who you fall in love with, right? But maybe having people in his life that maybe was a bit more of a toxic situation mm. yeah. than... Yeah, if he had a match some girl, he could put him on the straight and narrow. But then you go, I don't know if a girl that could have put him in the straight and narrow because he's too much of a firecracker. Yeah. He needed somebody that was that was also in, 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 in charge. You just yeah. look at the whole thing and you go, and do you know what? There's an element with Maradona and there's an element with Andy Gorham and there's an element where you go, and, and listen, none of these men have covered themselves in glory with relationships with women, right? No, not one bit. At all. 
but there is an element when you go, do you know, the money, the life, and then the 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 buzz leaves because you're yeah. not doing the job yeah. anymore and you're not getting the praise and everything and then and you just sit and you kinda go, There's something really quite tragic about that level of genius yeah. because he was and it pains me <laughs> as somebody who he broke their heart <laughs> continually <laughs> when he played for Rangers with slide rule passes, right? He was a player. Oh, he was but, unbelievable. You know, uh, with his demons, and it is the same as Maradona and Andy Gorham. And yeah. also, that that person who's always like the rager and trying to get a laugh. There is that element deep down that they're like, they just want everyone to yes, like them. Yes. So once you become, you're going to be like, well, everyone loves me. When am I pank them? Or am I being a dickhead? So you're gonna not. He stop doesn't doing know that. when to say no. No, no, no. In any form. And you no. need somebody around you that's going to say no. I mean, yeah. there was a big drinking culture with him. Chris Evans and then the old Jimmy Five Bellies, like that was a big. That's right, Danny culture. Baker and all aye, them aye, boys. Danny that's right. Baker and, that, and they were like you know big at that time. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They were all big on radio and TV. I mean, Chris Evans at that point, I think, owned Virgin Radio. Remember he bought Virgin he was Radio massive, stuff like and that. He was. And you TFI, Friday, and then yeah, it was yeah. uh, radio stations. Is that Ginger Chris and, Evans? Uh, he did some riding, didn't and, he? And then the. Don't forget your toothbrush. Don't forget your toothbrush. But what was the one on the show? Do, the, do, the morning do, do, show? Do, 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 what was that? Oh, Big Breakfast. Big Breakfast. Big Breakfast, yeah. So all that, like he had all that sort of fame that would come in. So, Do you hear yeah. the story about him recently? No. He was on that Celebrities in the Dark where they got all celebrities and then locked them in a room with no Chris lights. Chris Evans? No, God's going. All right. Oh, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said the story. Tell, tell the okay, story. Okay, so it's a show where they get celebrities and I, turn all the lights off because they're out of ideas. And what they say, what Gaza? What a depressing. <laughs> what if there's no light in the room? How can Six we, episodes. How can we, how, what TV programme do we want to make? Will we go and ask people if they want to make a TV programme? No, no, no. What we'll do is we'll get six. And we'll get Gaza. Reasonably famous people. And we'll put them in a room with no lights on. <laughs> yeah. Like... It's like a nine-year-old's pyjama party. Yeah, right. literally. Hit me up. So Gaza talks about the first time he goes down to Dining Street to meet Maggie Thatcher. Have you heard this yet? Well, see, there's a, I've got quite a lot of problems on <laughs> yeah. various it's levels yeah, with yeah, this. Yeah, right? This is a nightmare for you. Hit oh, me up. Really he says yeah, Thatcher's got his, or, or, or she hugs him or whatever, and he goes, and she hugs me, and I got a bit of a boner. Got a bit of a root. Really I this. am actually going to vomit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Also, Paul, good to see you were looking after your uh, family's mining traditions. Yeah. Right? Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> Runs out, he goes, right, I need to get rid of this. I can't have no. a boner down the street. Runs in the bathroom and just cracks one off. And down the street. And down the street. I've seen the story. That's I'm insane. A bit, like... Nah. <laughs> just beats no. up. The worst part is Thatcher giving you a boner, like... I mean, maybe when she died at half route, but like Thatcher herself gave me no. a boner. <laughs> That's fucking Jelly sticky. and ice cream. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and this is where it all started to go wrong for the United Kingdom, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. When much loved football hero, loved by millions, Paul Gascoigne got a boner. <laughs> Over fucking. Over Maggie. hugging Maggie Thatcher. <laughs> Which I probably don't even tells her you more. Got a fucking boner when she fucking which probably him. tells you more about the woman that he needed in his life. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, probably yeah, yeah, yeah. at all. He's like a stern mum, and he just hugs uh, her. And he's or a up nanny. Yeah. I used to think of Maggie Thatcher when I didn't want to come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people say like that would have stopped me. Because you men right in your head, I, you want a I, crime as a crime as a crime. Definitely <laughs> stops you come. Bitch. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Crime. crime is a crime and crime unless it's general. But she, she was a bitch, but she wasn't even like she was horrible. Oh yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, was, she was she evil. Was, she was hard. No, like you can meet somebody that's not that good looking, but they're a brilliant person. No, I mean as a person, person, she was evil. And they could get you aroused that way. Do you know what I mean? I don't. I think I've read a lot of books from Maggie Thatcher, mm-hmm. right? Because I really like history and I really like politics, and Maggie Thatcher has essentially shaped the world. That when I grew up in and when I lived in, right? Mm-hmm. For for worse. But you need to understand the psychology of the world that we're living in today because of that. Right, right? okay. In my opinion. And uh, the thing with Thatcher was she was ultimately a sociopath, right? Mm-hmm. She definitely yes, was absolutely. a sociopath. But 
And then this is where I will give her credit, my God. I've came into this studio, I've got full gas going credit. <laughs> and they like, love. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, my God. This Just turn your just... season book in the yeah. way out there. I'll give you your sash <laughs> on the way out. Aye. You're all good. Rosary beads and sash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think uh, what the difference is between Thatcher then and Thatcher now uh, and, and the, the, the political landscape that we live in within the UK now is that you had someone who ultimately believed what they were doing was right, right? And they came from a place of self-employment through their father's business. And then she worked hard and she got to university. She was very clever. Do you know she invented soft scoop ice cream? No. Thatcher. So Thatcher got a, a, deg a degree from St Hilda's College in Oxford. Mm -hmm. And you know Wall's soft scoop, the kind of yellow vanilla yes. one? She was part of the team that helped develop soft scoop ice cream. But well, now I hear, ironic, now I hear ice cream. ironic that everyone was eating jelly and ice cream when she died, isn't it? <sighs> but ironic that she took the milk that people used, used to, to make, make the, the ice cream. But so... Because you Scottish people, like, it was no poll tax. Like, I were, we didn't see that. We didn't have that here. Yeah. Yeah, you have always had the rate system. Do you know you what I mean? You always, always had the rates. But, like, I remember watching that in the news. And what, when was that? The 80s? Like, 88. I, 88, 88 I, for Scotland. I was eight years of age, and I can remember that. I can remember watching yeah. the news and people could then go, we're taking this, taking that, and, like, a wee flat in Glasgow. And Sheriff the officers. Going, that's no mine, that's no mine, that's no mine. You can't take that, that's no mine, that's no mine. And they're fucking They'd go in and chalk it. They'd go in and chalk it. They'd go in and chalk it. And the way the community charges, it was called, worked, was basically if you were a rich old woman in Perth and you lived in a seven-bedroom country pile that was your family's home, that you, but you only lived in that, yeah. you paid a single person's thing for being one wee person in a house. But the family in Glasgow of, let's just say, we were related, right? So of brother, sister, brother, all of working age, plus mum and dad, were all paying community charge. Right. And you could be living in a three-bedroom house. Yeah. Right? So you're paying more than So her. you were paying more than the pensioner or the older person in Perth that had the massive house and the massive utilities and, and everything. You were paying more because there was more of us... Right, which essentially, you could argue, is a tax on the poor. Yeah. Because you're sitting going, well, there's more chance of the, the, those children living at home because they've not went on to further and higher education and they've not, or, the, or they're out working. Mm -hmm. So therefore, those people are all living at home under their mum and dad's roof and the mum and dad. So that's maybe, say, £1,200 going out that house of a month, whereas your wee wifey there, who's loaded in a massive mansion, big pension inherited wealth from the husband as well maybe is sitting maybe paying a hundred quid a month yeah so you could see the disparity so that was then affecting families in areas like pollock and easter house housing schemes and all that kind of stuff and that really affected them now here was the 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 bit malcolm rifkind was now was it him or ian lang i can't remember which one of them was but they were the secretary of state for scotland at the scotland office because you used to have a Scotland office because we never had a parliament, right? So yeah. so that was, I appreciate you're 26, so I need to explain this to you. <laughs> Colouring in and all that, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the Scottish parliament wasn't a thing until 1999, so... Um, That's when they were granted devolved powers, was it? Uh, no, uh, 98, I think the referendum was, and 99 was the opening of the parliament, okay. I think. I think okay. that's... Roundabout. He should know this because he has a degree in politics. Yeah. Mm. I knew they were granted That's devolved. Another the Irish politics. Oh, degree. Exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't really cover that much in Northern Ireland. It was mainly American and British. Is that right? Yeah. That's how I knew Scotland got There's devolved like, powers around that time. Okay, I don't... So... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I didn't set the curriculum. That's what it was called. So that then was tried out in Scotland, right? And I can't... I think it was... I think it was Malcolm Rifkin, right? Who I know his son Hugo, because he works for Times Radio, he was a lovely, lovely man. I think it was Malcolm Rifkin. And actually, when you now listen to it, is he a Lord? He might be Lord Rifkin now. He actually talks quite, like, he talks a lot of sense. Do you know what I mean? He's a very traditional, small C Scottish Conservative. But they were like, right, we're going to try this out. 
in Scotland and there was protests every week. I remember graffiti all over Glasgow saying what the poll tax, you know, because it was basically if you were registered to vote, you were paying a tax. Right. Right, that's why mm -hmm. it was called the poll tax. It was actually the community charge, but it gets shortened to the poll Probably. tax because basically you're on the electoral register. You That means you're old enough to vote and you're old enough to pay. You're paying. So then it happened in England, right? Now bear in mind, you've had the minor strikes, you've had industrial action, you've had everybody striking, all sorts going on. We've had the deindustrialization of Northern England and we've had the privatisation of utilities and all that. All that's happened. People are protesting against different things. And then the poll tax happened in England. And that was the start of the end for Thatcher. Because what happened was there was a poll tax demonstration. And do you know the comedian Alan Davies? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. QI. QI, Jonathan Creek, all that. So Alan Davies, I think, was at university and was always kind of on protest stuff from that. And this day, he decided, I'm just going to go and watch my beloved Arsenal. Yeah. Goes to the game. There's no mobile phones, obviously. Goes to the game, comes out. London is a riot. City centre London is a riot. They had horses running up, running through Trafalgar Square and up Tottenham Court Road Saturday afternoon, pandemonium, bedlam, and that's when the Tories went, we need to stop this, and that's when Middle England started to turn against yeah. Margaret Thatcher, and that's what you always need to happen. It always, always, always must be Middle England's got to turn. Yeah. It's got to Because it's never going to be fully Southern England. No, no. They, need, they need all them wee towns you and You need the, the home yeah. counties. You yeah. need the home counties to go, I'm not voting Conservative, I'm going to vote Liberal Democrat. Yeah. Not to get the Liberal Democrats in, but to purely keep the Conservatives out. Yeah. So, because they're not going to vote Labour. No. Right? I mean, albeit the Labour Party currently, right now, is sitting there like David Cameron's Conservative Party. But the, uh, the riots was the start of the end for Thatcher. And yeah. they, the party felt that they had taken that she had taken their eye off the ball because she had been dealing with Glasnost, Perestroika, the fall of communism with Reagan, Gorbachev, that she'd became this kind of world leader that was almost higher than British politics. Yeah. But as soon as you start to see that in the streets, MPs go, I'm going oh, to lose my yeah. seat. Get her out the I'm fuck. going to lose my job. And then that... And it was... I think it was in about May time, and then she was gone by the November. Hmm. What was, was the name of the affair? The, the, the scan not scandal, but the issue that finally made Hesseltown ouster? Was it Westland, the, the private helicopter company? Uh, so there was a Westland thing, but no. What really happened with Thatcher is she won the 87 election. So she won the 87 election, and Dennis Thatcher actually said to her, start planning your resignation, right? Yeah. But she would still have been going there now if she could have, right? Yeah. Because uh -huh. when you get that level of power, yeah. and bear in mind, you're one of the key players that's just brought down the Cold War, the yeah. fall of well, communism. Yeah. yeah. Like, you have helped bring down the Berlin Wall. You have helped free Russia. And, and it's now Russia as opposed to the USSR. So you've got a whole different <laughs> level of power going on. Yeah. And what really kind of brought it about for Maggie was that she'd taken her eye off the boat and the party was getting more disenfranchised. And then we obviously live in a parliamentary democracy and governance by cabinet, which just stopped. And there was a resignation speech by Geoffrey Howe. Mm -hmm. And Geoffrey Howe and her, she just bullied him for yeah. years and years and years. And Geoffrey Howe done a resignation speech in the com in the Commons and it went along the lines of something like it's like being a batsman and walking up to the crease mm -hmm. to find that your captain has broken your bat something along those lines right was that some cricket analogy so I mean who cares right <laughs> but it was very home counties right but uh, and then that that was the start and then as, as things were just progressing through the party and the disenchantment, when Hazeltine stood against her, they went for a leadership election. And they said, look, Margaret, you need to go round the tea rooms in the House of Commons. House of Parliament, you need yeah. to go round the tea rooms. And she went, why do I need to go round the tea rooms? 
I've got the other jobs. So she went to Paris for a thing. So she goes to Paris and there's kind of murmurings within the Conservative Party and they all get together in her cabinet and all that. And she loses the first round of voting. Yeah. Or she doesn't win it, right? So it's going to be a second round of voting. And there's a there's a clip you'll see her coming out. You know John Sargent, the mm-hmm. the right John Star John Sargent standing. I don't know if it's the British Embassy or whatever, but at the bottom of these steps, and he's standing, and she comes out, and she literally pushes him out the way to get in front of all the microphones. Goes back, and they're like, "Are you need to get around the tea rooms? You need to get around the tea rooms." And she went, "If I need to get around the tea rooms, I need to resign. Send them all to my office in the House of Parliament. The cabinet's going in." So I was like, oh, of course I'll back you, Margaret. Of course I'll back you, Ken Clark. And you can say what you like about Ken Clark, right? But I think Ken Clark's quite a funny guy. Ken Clark's like, Margaret, it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I, they are not going to vote for you. It's over. And just really, really brutal. And I think a, a very young Michael Portillo had tried to persuade her to fight on. And I think that's when she went... No, I think at some point you need to leave with a bit of dignity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and that was it. And I remember watching that. I was 10 years old. I remember watching her leaving down the street. And I remember it being such a big thing. And I didn't grow up in a particularly political household. You know, my parents weren't members of a political party or anything like that. Wouldn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I find her a very interesting, really interesting read. Because she, she was Secretary of State for Education... Uh, and and Heath didn't rate her. Heath was just like, no, 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 no. And then she took on Willie Whitelaw, who was a Glasgow MP for Glasgow Cathcart. And genuinely nobody gave her a chance. And she went for it. And much the way of kind of Boris Johnson kind of went, nah. and And she got it. And they loved her because there was a real nanny element to her. Yeah. And posh men like. Danny's, yeah, you know, because they've grown up with them, they know what they're dealing with. Sort of, um, way drunk and footballers, but this is <laughs> But and it, it was that thing of her going right, okay, and then she, to be fair to her, she 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 appointed a cabinet that could all do their job, mm. which I would argue is not done. Is not been done. It, yeah, certainly not since twenty nineteen. No. Yeah, uh, so, Johnson would. I mean, I'm sorry, but people like Nadine Doris. I mean, come on, man. Come on, pick your mates. Yeah, the very, the, very much the process of selecting a cabinet is political in of itself. You're not just going for the German system of meritocracy of who's the best. It's who will vote for me and agree yes. with me so I can or implement. Who's, who's, who's voted to put me in yeah. this position that yes. I will put in that position? Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you vote me in, I'll give you a job. And yes. this, job was, for this, the this yeah. was the problem with Johnson yeah. as well. Because... Johnson had actually got himself into a position with people within his cabinet that he couldn't get rid of. He had actually... His cabinet were then dictating to him, yeah. well, I know where the bodies are buried. So yeah. the whole yeah. pretty Patel bullying thing, I know where the bodies are yeah. buried, Boris. So. Yeah. Still, the, the, it's still happening now, like, within the Conservatives, like the... the, the you, what was that? What you know he's just been... <laughs> Oh, I think I was I was sort of burping. At the same it sounded time. like you swallowed a fly but, mid uh, talking. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's still like it's still happening in the Tory party now. Like it's still in turmoil. Like it's fucking. Yeah, wasn't I? I honestly. Dominic Rob's away. The he's away. Day. Was it bullying allegations he was facing? Twenty four bullying allegations. Yeah, I bet you there's way more than that. That's I just stuff think, I could get. <laughs> some things I just look at a lot of guys in the Tory party and I go. See if you've went to a school where they've banged your willy in a drawer. Mm. You're a fucking sociopath. Uh, and you, like, he's yeah. like a karate black belt. And then he's been done for bullying. And I'm thinking, you've been bullied. Yeah. And you see it in yeah. comedy, don't you? 100%. You've sat in green rooms and you've looked at people and went, you're a sociopath. Yeah. You're a sociopath and you've been bullied. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and you can see you can see the ego. Yeah. And you can see the determination. And you can see that and you yeah. go... Oh. Well, I mean, ninety percent of the comedians, I would say, have, have been, been bullied. bullied. Yeah. Pretty much all of them have yeah. at one stage. We could say names, but we don't want people to turn up again. I um, do well off here. <laughs> 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 but no, Maggie Thatcher. Is... I apologise to everybody in the New Lodge and stuff and places like. I'll that. say this: the views we get if Maggie Thatcher turns up next week, we'll be fucking but, flying. Oh, here, that'd be amazing. 
<laughs> I don't think Gaza would fucking take a hard nerve if Maggie turned up next week. No. The way she would be, the shape she's in. <laughs> Definitely not. And you said she made soft, soft scooped ice cream. Well, she was part of the team that invented it. I worked in a fella's house here. He was an Englishman. And he invented Maltesers. Well, I would have married him. Yeah. I worked in a guy's house who invented the speed camera. Bastard. Did you kill him? Uh-huh. No, you no. Have. He was the At ticket. 40 mile an hour, you should have killed him. He was the ticket. <laughs> Hi. No, well, what happened to your man? Your man that I worked in his house, his wife actually was, she was a barrister here. But he worked for Nestle, is it? No, Mars. 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 So he worked for Mars and he said that in the industrial estate, the guy that owned Mars, like his boss, took a walk one day around the industrial estate and what the oval team is it oval isn't it oval team oval team right it's malt malt milk drink was like two factories down right and he went in and says can I have a wee sample and stuff and I own Mars up the road there and we make chocolate and he says he came in and your mum was part of a team of like inventing new stuff and he was like what can you do with this and he gave them like a crate of oval team and he says whatever way it happened a wee it would congeal into a wee ball and then the chocolate went around it. But it, it formed that shape itself. They didn't even have to do it. Whatever they done with the mixture. And it just became... And he says, and that's how Maltesers came about. Holy shit. Yeah. What, so a, what, invented, a, what a legend of a man. He, he invented Maltesers. That's Fuck. dynamite. Yeah. I like Maltesers. Oh, so do I. Aye. Especially in a celebration. The, she sucked the chocolate off. 100%. Aye. Yeah. And every chocolate bar I get... The chocolate comes off, then the middle gets eaten. Mm-hmm. See the best one to do it with? We Kinder Bar, you know, the wee tiny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the yeah, edges yeah, yeah. off, and then you eat the white center. My that favorite like thing of something. Chocolate. That's a good time. Is it Twix, right? Because Twix is my go to chocolate, right? Mm-hmm. But see, for a cup of tea, and you bite the top and the bottom off, and then you suck the tea, the hot drink, whatever. Hot so that's t- a Tim Tam slam. So in Australia, they have these biscuits called Tim Tams, yep. right? Which are basically penguins, but a bit nicer. And you bite either end and put it in your tea and then suck your tea yeah. through the middle and that's called a Tim Tam slam. And then when you eat the Twix, it's fucking delicious. You've told me a side. I'm, it's so good. I'm not trying that. It's it sounds so, so no, rotten. It's not, but it's so good. Here's the so Twix is a straw, man. It's I don't so think nice. you can limit yourself like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> See, this is like the football thing, man. <laughs> Can he just have one chocolate bar? Do you know what I mean? No. But what I will say is, my chocolate preference would always be Cadbury. Yeah. Sometimes Galaxy, because I love a Can minstrel. Can I tell you something? See the Cadbury in Ireland? Like the south of Ireland? Europe. Right, well, in the south of Ireland, just right. So you can buy a chocolate bar up here and you can buy one down there. The chocolate bars that's made in the UK is made with powdered milk. The chocolate bars that's made in the south is made with real milk. The fucking I'm going to cocaine in a few fuck, weeks, man. I am stocking up. You'd be sniffing it. You'll Honestly, be, it's because it used to be it used to be milk yeah, in this yeah. country. Because when are you, you doing have the a, cat laughs, are you? I'm doing the cat laughs, aye. And then it's uh, a big fucking hit of mine that I don't get fucking booked for. On the cat laughs, yeah. where's that? Kilkenny. I've never heard it. I'm doing it. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't do much down south, so I have no idea. It's There's fucking, a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're sectarians, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's Chelsea, Chelsea. Chelsea. It's, Chelsea thing. it's not even the sectarians. It's, it's if just you were Man you or Liverpool, you'd, you'd be, be right in there. Man. But I'd rather be unemployed. <laughs> All right. I'm happy being scared. Do you know the unemployment down there? You get like 400 a week. <laughs> do you? Know yeah. Fuck off, man. You do? Really? really? Like, unemployment benefit in Dublin's 400 a week. Fuck me. So expensive. Hold on, can we get back to the chocolate? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you commit yourself? To just like one favourite chocolate bar. I've got really. Like, I'm about to get married in September and I am happy to be monogamous for the rest of my life. But if you asked me to be like that with a chocolate bar, I, that, how do you feel nah, about I that? No, I couldn't be. I, it just depends what the day is. Some days I want a Snickers, some days I want an MM. That's a heavy bit of chocolate, uh, mm, Snickers. I like a Snickers. That's I a don't face like... workout. Mm. Uh, that's a... I don't like. That's it, you're nuts. driving, there's a good chance you'll choke on it. I don't like nuts mixed with chocolate. I like them separately. I don't like them mixed. What? Do you not like a chocolate covered peanut? No. A wee yellow M and M. No. The fuck? No. What? I so just can't do it. Stick just end the record. <laughs> I just can't do it. Stick your support. And it's a great Stick thing it. because <laughs> honestly, she, she this green room's going she, to have the worst supply. Likes, It'll just be Twixies. <laughs> she likes Ferrara, yeah. And I don't mean it because I buy them all for her because then I know I won't go near them. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a chalk that I know can be in the house and I won't go near if I'm trying to be good. But you, but yet yeah, you're also being a feeder, uh, Paddy. Oh, fuck. Oh, you have to. You have to. <laughs> you're trying to be good, but you're drinking tea Lindor, with Twixes. Lindor is fucking great. Lindor's uh, top shelf. Listen, that's Christmas. That's Christmas. Yeah. That's That's like... You can't include that in your daily. You can tell you're doing arenas right because you can't include Linda <laughs> in your daily chocolate consumption. I'd need to be unemployed in Dublin for four hundred euro a week to be afforded Linda. The, the Linda, what I do is who like, goes into a petrol station? It's like mm, dairy milk, no fruit and nut, no uh, Galaxy, no. Can I have a Linda? Who does that? I, my, I don't even buy. I send my fucking driver and they get my Linda. Your, <laughs> your butler. I do that thing with the Linda too. You can bite the shell off. Yes, and, and then say to see if melts. I put my chocolate in the freezer, and people fucking you fucking nonce. You what? Yeah, and you know what? See Linda balls. I find the peas or something like that and throw them in there so the kids can't get them. <laughs> Do you like chocolates with our kids? He puts them in with the peas. Don't they buy them it's enough chocolates? That's my chocolates, do you know what I mean? That's my shit, you know? Well, how do you eat that frozen? Did you grow up in a big family? Mm, big enough. How big was it? Yeah. <laughs> Four of us? Aye, oh, right, that's why you're hiding chocolate ah. in the freezer. Oh, you're a poor bastard. <laughs> Building sites too, like I. Oh, you can't eat Susie. if you've got chocolate in a building site. Forget you about fucking <laughs> we bye bye. We done this job in a place called Dalagaday. We seaside town, right? And I know Dalagaday. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll know it, right? So we were working on it. And we we're doing these schemes where we we're updating apartments, and uh, there was this guy, and he looked like Zach Dingle from fucking Amberdale, right? And he had fucking one eye. And he had about four dogs, but he was he was like in charge of the site, not a foreman, just in charge of like he was obviously paid by the paramilitaries to be there. It was somebody's uncle or something, you know. And he had no skills, he didn't do any work, he just walked about. But all the lunches, you know, there was one apartment that wasn't ripped apart yet, and we all had our tea in it. And you would go in, and everybody would go, I could have swore she put a Mars bar or a fucking thing in my right. And then, no, somebody would go, bollocks, I put four t- Kit Kats in that this morning, like there was a packet, and I just put the whole bag. And we're all going, where the fuck's this going? And then I says, I'm going to try and see who it was. So I get up in the loft and lay there, and we all go in the morning, set our thing, and then we're away working on other blocks. And there he was, he came in like this, the wee dog. And I go in, and he's opening the bags, and he's looking out, you know, and he's feeling in, he's getting the chocolate, and he's filling his pocket, right? And here's me, you fucking bastard. Aye, right? cos that's bad you jive. You fucking man. bastard. And it, it actually was Easter time, cos I remember I'd brought an Easter egg in. Please tell me he was melting it down to turn it into Easter eggs, cos that would be amazing. <laughs> he fucking, he had took my Easter egg, and I was like, no, that's fucking like that. He was, took your, you brought an like, Easter egg to work? I, I, no way, there was no chocolate or biscuits left. Yeah. And she had made me lunch, she says, there was nothing left. Add Easter egg, I bought, you hadn't had it yet. It was on top of the fridge. Did you ever keep uh, Easter egg chocolate in the and fridge? It, yeah. Oh, and then dip the it in the Nah, I keep it in the cupboard. It's so fucking it's soft. Good. And you just no, crack no, it. you have to, you have to have a wee bit. No, because then you enjoy you it longer. It, it just splits perfect. Oh. It's great. Oh. Cabri's fucking. You can write in the inside. Talking. My girlfriend will always go, like she'll always like crack open the old Easter egg, and then she'll like take a wee bit off, and then she'll write hello and then hi. Ah, ah, love. Oh, that's love. love. That is lovely. <laughs> hey, you so he's eating your Easter egg. So, right? Easter so egg. he took the Easter egg, and that was that was the final straw for me, right? So I was like, I'm gonna teach this cunt a lesson. So I said to the guys working with, I says, I'm gonna take a shake the bag, right? And I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna leave it in the tea room on Monday. So that Friday, I fucking done a big shake in the bag, put fucking old sandwiches in with it, and fucking a bottle, make it look like a lunch. Tied it and I put it in the cupboard and I says, right, on Monday I'm going to come in and I'm going to set that in with the lunches. And he's like, right. So me and him got up in the loft, I set it in the room. And right now, there's your mom about nine o'clock, I came in. And he's looking and he lifts the bag and he's fucking going through it, getting chocolate. He set it down, he keeps putting his head out, looking in the kitchen, make sure no one's coming. Next one he lifts the bag, <laughs> puts a hand in there. Ah, right. Fucking hand was fucking covered in shit. And we're laying up the lawn, we're laughing like fuck. <laughs> so we get down, there was no phones at the time to record. We had phones, but there was no recording. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So we fucking run down to look, and we're looking out the window, and he's out looking, and his hands covered in shit. He's like, there was just a big barrel with water. And he just dipped the hand in, and I got, and then put his hand in his pocket, and opened a chunk of oh! <laughs> He said, 30 oh, bucks. I can't. 
That's oh. worse than a boner. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh. Me. A chunky bad. Kit Kat, too. That's I like... Know, like it was did he not just have like, one of them in his hand? Like, that's like, fucking stinking. But it was like, he didn't even... Like, didn't even properly wash his hands. And I just went... <laughs> I thought I was getting him. It wasn't a big deal for him. Like, <sighs> what are we on there? You don't know. <laughs> do you know what else, though? Do you know what I really miss? A trio biscuit. Oh, do you remember them? Oh. What's that? Oh, they were like three... It, it was the... the, the trio... trio. 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 Fuck, they were great, great then. I'm going to find trios. They do, because I've never even heard of them. They were all... I forgot about that. Look at that. No, I like chocolate. No, like, there, was, there, was a, there was like a cracker, like a... Like a biscuit. Biscuit, like, like a... Chocolate. But a big layer of chocolate on the top. Like a, like a club. Like, like a club. Right? Like, like a club, like, only it was divided into three. But the, 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 the top bit, if you fit it off the... <sighs> Biscuit, it was like a big. Mm, it was tree. Like, like a biscuit Yorkie. Yeah. Oh, fuck. It was great. No, these were great trio. Do you remember? I for, totally forgot about this. Trio, <laughs> man. What a biscuit. The advertisement was trio. If anybody trio. knows where we can get, get trios, trios, please let us know. There's nothing makes me sadder than a discon- discontinued sweet that I've missed. Oh. Do, do you remember? Uh, Galaxy Secret was nice. Yes. The Flight Bar. Flight, remember? Flight was like the original Milky Way. Yeah. But, oh, it was so good. And Sparrow. Do you remember Sparrow? Sparrow. Do you remember Cadbury Dreams? I The white chocolate? I, no. I mm. don't remember. Them, no. Oh, remember they were... Spider. Spiral. Spiral. I, I, sp- they were like a twirl. They were in the same yeah, kind of packaging see, yeah. as Swirl. But Do people, I remember people, them? People here would get them because they would cover it and then it said P-I-R-A on them. <laughs> I remember yeah, that's a fucking chucky or not chucky chucky chocolate or not chucky or not that's why I can't even believe this island's managed 25 years of peace with that I stuff know, that up. kind of thing yeah. that's what I remember talk, when Tom stayed was in he was like what do you guys even do differently and like it would surprise you the amount that like little things we do that are entirely fucking different, different. yeah do you know what I mean? It hasn't been since I've started doing this podcast with you that I'm like, you'll say, it's like, do you ever do this? I'm like, never. Never. I know there is. All the fucking like, time. There is a difference. There is in certain things. There's yeah. A not, yeah. No one gets annoyed about it anymore. It's just, it's just shit we do. Yeah. Just little different the things. The taxi driver was telling me a story uh, on my way into Belfast today from the airport, right? And he was saying, how, he was like, oh, is this your first time back since COVID? And I said, no, no, I was here. In June, in the same day of the pallets, yeah. right on the same yeah. day, uh, I had walked along. You know that wee row of shops just in Queens, and it's like the dumpling place and the noodle place. Oh and all yes, that. Yeah, dumpling library. So I was walking along there, and I was like, "Ah, oh, these are new. I've not seen these. Like, ah, oh, it's a bit off since COVID." And then I just turned around the corner, and there was a house in the state that still had like, like they were putting up the Union Jack button for the twelfth, mm-hmm. right? And the button was up, and I just thought. Never changed Belfast, <laughs> right? You like like all these beautiful modern foods yeah. of the world, but you yeah. know that's it, right? Giant flags, giant flags, always. And then the guy went, "Well, got a story." The Chinese community, because of course there's a really big Chinese community in Queens, and there's blah blah blah. They wanted to put an arch. And he went, they could not put an arch up there because that was then stamping and other people's culture and identity. And I was like, imagine being the bold Chinese and going, I know you've got your own stuff going on, but we'd really like an arch because we think it'll bring some tourism into the industry. I just thought, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love and, the, that. and the fact that the ones were like, they're not putting an arch up and they're like, why are you so against it? Because we put our arch up yeah. in July. They were looking at all the bunting and they were like, we could do with some Chinese lanterns instead. It would yeah. really do the place up. It'd be amazing. <laughs> and I just thought, isn't that just the Chinese just going, listen, yeah. I know you've got your own thinking on, but we think a wee arch would really add to the situation. Yeah. Yeah, I think just... we are like the only place in, the, in the, the entire UK doesn't have like a wee Chinese area where there's just well, loads of restaurants. Well, if you went to the market, and... they actually do have the street names and stuff just in that wee one community yeah in Chinese which is at the bottom of Donegal Street I've never noticed that yeah I, you can drive in and see it yeah so see that street I was talking about yeah. is that Donegal Place That's right lowered, so yeah. Right. Yeah. basically I'm a local yeah you know the crack, crack. that's around near Lavery's isn't it 
Yeah. Yeah. Just around the corner. Yes. yes. So basically, that row was going to be Little China, and then the ones that never like. I no. think you'll find uh, the opium was happening. <laughs> and, and you know what? The bad thing about it was, like, people saying, oh, they're stuck in time. There's now 20 vintage and antique shops on that road. <laughs> and I was like, if that was ever, like, fuck you. <laughs> you are back in time that they're, like, just fucking cemented it for me. So it's Chinese and antiques and loyalists. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. What a hoot. In the one street. <laughs> In the one street. Where you can get your Union Jack bars. Yes. And some chicken balls and fried rice. Chicken balls fried rice. Oh. And then all the stuff to keep you sick turn. Like your marmalade jars and stuff that you want, they're all in there. Is, mar- is marmalade seen as a Protestant thing? Is it? I no, I'm I'm saying because they used to have the galley walks on the side of the jar. Oh fuck, that's right. My mum had one of those. Didn't see the problem. <laughs> what a galley walk or, not, or a galley walk? The doll. A galley walk. Yeah, yeah, doll. Yeah. They go for big money on eBay. It's mental. My but my mum got one in like oh seven. Like it was like way oh. too late. But she she wasn't. She genuinely wasn't. She just didn't see the problem with it. She's like, I used to have these dolls all the time. I was like, you can't at least put it away. Like, stop having it out in the house when I bring people here. Like, my brother and I will have, like, loads of ornaments and stuff that are all, like, monkeys and serving outfits and stuff. Oh, Jesus. Or, like, the PG tips. All that. Monkey sort of, that yeah. to, do you least... remember those outfits? Mm, uh, with I... Johnny Vegas and Monkey or beforehand? No, no, before the... No. It was PG tips, wasn't mm-hmm. it? They used to do... Uh, adverts with like monkeys doing stuff and it was about it was just really bad. Kiora do you remember the Kiora ads what was the Kiora ad I'll be your dog whoop, 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 whoop. it was right. all crows but they were all like they were, they were all like what, was know, it like the Dumbo crows yeah oh. <laughs> 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 I'll be your dog whoop, 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 whoop. and then they're all walking along and then actually they got like laundry and formed like a like a woman sort of slave in the deep south like oh. walking along and all like it was like when you really see bad, that man. stuff see when you see that stuff you go who thought of that like but, what's uh, that got to do with a drink do you know what I mean yeah yeah like it's not the, like do you remember Oonga Boongo or Oonga um, 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 they drink it in the jungle <laughs> do you know what I mean I mean <laughs> Just wait. I remember that. Yeah, my dad used to drink it flat out. And probably the biggest one is that people didn't even realise. Yeah. Was the man from Del Monte. What's that? Oh, yeah, the white man. The white man going in till the jungle. Linen or... suit with a Panama hat on. So you know, like, the Monte tinned fruit. Do you not know this, no? Uh, no, I know what Del Monte is, but... Yeah. So the tinned fruit... So the guy would go in with his white linen suit, his Panama hat, old white guy going in and it would have someone who worked while they were growing the sea pineapple who invariably would be a black man Yep. they would cut it off the tree, cut the pineapple hand it to the man from Del Monte and he would bite a bit and he would be like yeah and the saying was the man from Del Monte says yes and basically you had a white guy an old white guy in a linen suit with white Panama hat on walking about a farm that he owns yeah. essentially yeah. with people of people colour. don't even talk about it like but that was like working and it was like the man from Del Monte he says yes so the, like, the white, on, the, the this fruit is approved so by a slave so owner bad. this is yes. good slave yeah, the fruit the big white man came from England to say look this is okay this is where we're going to take it it's Jesus so Christ. colonial it's so horrific that's mad I mean the worst adverts there was none really racist by the time I grew up. You had the DOE adverts, which I don't know if they got them in Scotland. Like road safety adverts. Soft murder porn is essentially what they were. Yeah. What? Oh, uh, what's they been your man- favourite? The, my so fa- many. My favourite was the guy who was out playing football with his mates. <laughs> I love that one. And he, he scores a goal he's like, yeah! And has got that man of the world by Fleetwood Mac is playing. Can I tell, tell you about my life? So he's like that. And they're all out after a match in the bar and they're like, fuck, and he's going on dreaming and they're going, bollocks, have an hour time you can have. And he's like, Rah. and then there's this wee kid in the back garden playing football 
and the daddy and the daughters are and they're all having fun and they're telling you they're bad and then your man's fucking bad and he's about six pence he's like nah I'm fucking going I'm going and they're like fuck you see you next week and he gets in the car and he's fucking singing to himself yeah yeah me man's fucking scores a goal in the garden and he's fucking giving all that this dad's looking at the kids and next minute the car flips comes in the garden fucking squices the kid and they didn't really cut the, the show the kids the show, corpse the show, and the dad picking him pick up it, going the, no the daddy's holding him and your mom's standing there going fuck she only had four pence I don't know what the fuck yeah. wow and then it was like, always like was, never drink and that was all at like four in the afternoon that wasn't a late night advert I remember uh, my dad showed me this not that long ago actually and it was a it was a sign and I think it was three four five yeah and it was like it was like six pints and five were crossed out and it was like don't have the sixth one and it was like from 1970 <laughs> and it was funny because I was talking to my dad about it my dad was like he goes I've not been a drink driver or anything like that he yeah. said because I've never done it he said but there is a thing with your generation meaning my generation who grew up with don't drink and drive but it's like zero tolerance like I would yeah. never so in Scotland it's like zero like you cannot have a sniff Whereas in England, it's like, oh, you can have one. You're allowed a pint here. Aye, yeah. right? So you can have one then still drive in Scotland. It's like, no, don't have any booze, right? Which I just kind of go, fair, because it reacts differently. Like, yeah. like, I've not eaten since this morning, so see if I have a pint just now, I'll be fleeing. Uh, There's yeah. no way I could drive. Yeah. But yeah. if I have a pint at 10 o'clock the night after I've something to eat and done my gig and just sit and sup it, I probably could. We right. actually worked with a guy in Skagness, English man from Essex, and he never finished his pint in the bar. He brought it with him. What the fuck? So if the cops stopped him, he'd be go, I haven't even finished the first one. <laughs> wow. I mean, nothing's going to get you pulled over faster than going <laughs> past the police with yeah, the glass in your hand. I, I, so he brought the, like, I didn't even finish the, <laughs> the fucking pint. That's just wild, dark. man. And he used to be driving, and I used to be going, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my old boys, like, it was really common for people Oof. to get, like, four pints, five pints, six pints, and just get... Yeah. ...and to be like, can I remember working in the pub and being like, you're driving. Is that where the phrase five and drive comes from? Probably. Mm. Uh, I remember working in the pub and, like, a guy driving that and, like, literally fighting with him to take his keys off him to lock them in the till and be like, come in tomorrow and get your keys. Do you know? Yeah. Uh, because you can't... Fuck, because you imagine you... five pints and drive? I'm, I'm fucked. I need bed after five the, pints. The, the guy was doing the gig for Newcastle. He owns a bar, and he was saying that uh, there was this guy one night, and he, he was trying to start his van, and he says he was fucking blitzed. And he was like, you can't drive, and he's like, I'm not fucking leaving my van here, all my tools. And he's like, well, listen, I will drive you home. I'm like, oh, you go home? He says, I'll get a taxi. I just can't let you drive. You've had like six or seven pints. And your man's going, but I can't leave my van here. There's all tools in it. And he then the, the van and was driving him home and the cops stopped him and he got dumb in the own shirts. <laughs> Did and the I police not like, even go like, no, you're doing him a good thing? Actually, he was like, and the police were like, well, that's up to you, but what if you killed somebody or were involved in an accident you didn't have insurance? We have to. And it went to court and the solicitor was like, when you get to court, it'll be fine because the judge will go, well, you were a responsible bar owner here. You... And the judge went, listen, I agree with what you've done. Your accents are very good, but you can't drive without insurance and you get fucking dumb. Fuck off! Yeah. That's See, that's, a, that's stupid. That's atrocious. That's man. law for the sake of law. And that is. his insurance will be through the roof because mm-hmm. he's driven without insurance. Sure. Yeah. yeah, everything. So he was just like, so you try and be like a good Samaritan and you just... But he says, I couldn't have went to bed that night in case he killed some kid or fucking yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah those were the adverts we got growing up. No, the best advert, you missed this one during the Troubles, right? Because we used to change the trousers. One. But there was this, do you know that there? My the dad called me up just the other day. The cat in the cradle aye, in the silver. Aye, aye, so aye, aye. there would be a guy, right? And he'd be sitting there and he'd be following, going with his missus. The next month's just pregnant. And he's like, oh, fuck, I'm pregnant and all. He's in the bar. Next month, someone comes over and goes, you want to join the fucking the boys here like, and he's like oh I, I joined the boys are. and he's got a wee kid and then she's like you're never in the house and he's like I'm out fucking shooting for the country you know what I mean and she's like hanging the wee kid's growing up in the street and he's fucking kicking football he's going dad do you want to play with me he's going nah song I can't this song's playing over the Yeah. so his dad then it's goes, a long ad it does the full it, song it, it, like, it, it does that's the a long song, song. But like, then the it's like dad, seven minutes then the dad's driving and then they go and they fucking open up <laughs> shoot all these people in the bar and then they leave and they go back and he goes back to the house and he gets in beside his wee lad and then gets up and then he goes to jail 
and then the wee lad's going to see him in jail next man he gets out and he's now lad and he's a grand and he's talking to his son you can see him going listen now you don't want to go to jail like me don't be in this kid's going fuck up you were never about i could have been a footballer and you fucking you were involved in shooting i'm doing that and then his son goes and you think he's going to go and do shooting but he's not he gets shot so it's like, and it's that whole song. Yeah. But like the song was the cat in the cradle and the silver spoon. Yeah. You know I want to be like me. You, dad, you know I'm going to be like. That's him like a bar. wild. <laughs> so, and so, this is like before dinner. So they're like, <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was. It was before the six o'clock news. And then you used to go. <laughs> that would end and then the Simpsons and then would be on. And then the news would come on. So you're like, oh, right. <laughs> and then we'd go, two people were shot dead today. And everybody yeah. would go, wonder was your mom saying cat in the cradle? Well, they done it. <laughs> like well, it, 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 it made it like normal. Like we, I thought that was all normal growing yeah. up, you know, because of that. And like we changed the words. Like you would change the words according to the estate you lived on. Yeah. So like you know, we would sing. But Dad joined a provies just the other day. He said, "Thanks very much for the hand grenade." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it was all that kind of stuff went on. Do you know what the Alberts came to mind? Do you remember the ones the teenagers driving in the car and the songs like "Bad It to Bad It." Fuck it, who and they all bump into each other slow motion. A truck comes the other way, smashes into them, and one guy's not wearing a seatbelt. Now the message of the advert is always wear your seatbelt. So one guy at a car full of five's not wearing it, they crash, and they literally throw this guy about the car like a fucking rag doll. I mean it goes right in and shows them cracking heads and does the noise of like <laughs> Tell you what. The old storming doesn't mess with its government. And that's that's, that's, that's the like end. proper DUP. Let's fucking yeah. show them what happens. But also, when the car crash happens, <laughs> they switch the beat up. A new song uh, comes on. It's like, do it, do, do it, it to me, me one now. more time. <laughs> as this guy's just fucking. It's, it's just, and like our advertisements are shown everywhere around the world. Going, this is legit. <laughs> <laughs> this is legit. The ad ends with five body bags. Like, that's how the audience... I'm going to tell you a crack about that. There was a Dublin comedian, I'm not going to tell his name, because he says, please never ever tell anybody uh-huh. that. But he was in my house before. I know gig, who this is. And he's seen it, and he says to me, I don't get why they said that. And I went, what What happened? And he went, it said, the one eating the sandwich done the damage. <laughs> and I went, it didn't say that. And he says, what did it say? And I says, the one with the seatbelt did, did, the damage. did the damage. But he thought, he says, the one eating the sandwich did the damage. <laughs> You need to name that person. <laughs> you need to name that person. He's got in trouble naming people. I he can't. I can't. Can't. I can't do it no more, Susie, because they, they turn up here and they go, what are you talking to him about me? But I think we're well on Actually, there. Actually, so, you're wee bollocks on I this. You bollocks. need to behave yourself. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear.